Hey everybody, how's it going? A while back I did a piece on uh, the differences in rail called Not All Rail is Created Equal or something like that. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And then last week when I was doing videos up at the derailment, I talked about insulated joints and I-bonds and all that. And I had some questions about uh, insulated joints, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to uh, go over insulated joints, uh, what their function is, where we put them, and why we put them there. So we'll start right here at this intermediate signal between Waylong and Marcel. Well, all right. As I said, these are the intermediate signals between Waylong and Marcel. Waylong, the control point is about a mile that way. You can see tunnel 10 there that comes out onto the top of the loop. Marcel is about the same distance that way, East Marcel. And the uh, insulated joints here are used to separate the two track circuits, actually four track circuits if you count both tracks, but they separate the track circuits between the control point at Waylong and the control point at Marcel. There are other locations where the, these could be used. They could be used for different reasons. At an intermediate, they could be, they could be used to separate the track circuit, uh, the track circuits between uh, two other intermediates on each side of them or intermediate and a control point or whatever. But that is what they are used for. Uh, now we talked about I-bonds down at cable at the derailment. And you can see that weld in the room. Let me get on the side where the sun is. You can see where that weld is on the rail, kind of. Got a lot of grease on it, a lot of grease from the oilers. Uh, those, that is a transducer. There's another one just like it on the other rail. And those are used for these smashboard type dragon equipment detectors. You've seen the kind, uh, I, I did a piece on them at, about uh, how wayside detectors work, the paddle type. This is another type, these wires plug into each end of these boards and if these boards are broken it breaks the connection between the wires, sends a signal to the radio over there, tells the train they have a dragon equipment come down here on the other side and see that weld there that is the eye bond that came as one piece just like you saw them cutting and setting up at the derailment comes with the uh, insulated joint already in it they generally also come anymore with the uh, connections to the rail on already with a uh, with a sleeve for the bond strand and all you have to do is drip your bond strand back slide in that sleeve and crimp it and you're ready to go you don't have to get out your bonding equipment do any of that like you used to have to at all locations one another thing about the insulated joints you can see that the both of these joints are in pretty bad shape they are run together there should be about uh, at least a quarter inch gap with an insulated end post between each rail. The in insulated end post is still there, but the rail has run across the top of it. And that is common in territory with so many curves and grades. So these insulated joints are going to have to be slotted by the maintainer. He'll come out here with a, a grinder with a cutting wheel on it and put a little slot in those IJs to keep them from failing. With all the uh, iron filings that you saw in it, uh, that's from uh, regular use, but also the rail grinder uh, was just here the other night. That is, this is where I shot the uh, first segment of it where you could actually see it working. It was actually on that rail and I went over and looked at those joints and they're in pretty bad shape too. These will have to be slotted and at some point in the near future, they will have to be replaced. 
All right, well, I have moved up to Marcel, to the control point there, and that's the facing signal. And I might add a couple of things I didn't mention to begin with, that wherever there is a signal, there are insulated joints. That is a given. If there is a signal and there are no insulated joints, that's a problem. But anyway, you can see, I said the ones up there, they come with these little tabs already welded to the rail. The bond strand sleeve on it. Bond strand is the under, underground wire that we use. It's not always underground. For some, for some purposes, it's left on top of the ground. But generally, that is what uh, the underground wire we use to run the signal system. We use it for crossing signals, everything. It's about a number, I think it's about a number four. It's it's stranded. Anyway, that's what bond strand is. If you ever anybody say, hey, I had a roll of bond strand. Well, now you know what bond strand is. Okay, you can see here that the insulated end post is clearly visible here. And these uh, this joint is run down a little bit, but certainly not bad. The joints actually look uh, relatively new. As I said at the other joints, the rail wears a little faster on grades and curves than on a level tangent track. Okay, walking down a little bit from the uh, facing signal joints. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm getting too complicated. This rail right here, you see it bends off into the turnout. That's called the stock rail. Then you have the switch points, normal and reverse side. And then this, I can't remember what this is called, the closure rail or something? I can't remember. Uh, one of you track guys, one of you signal guys, leave that in the comments below. It's amazing that you do something for 40 years, you stop doing it for a couple of years, and you can't remember anything. But anyway, the switch points, both sides, are tied to these rails with these jumpers. These two circuits within the control point are straight DC circuits. They are not the microprocessor uh, pulse signal type stuff that runs on the rail but and out on the main lines between control points or in the sidings. These are straight DC and they change polarities right here. And these insulated joints are called polarity joints. The uh, You can see that up there, the stock rail goes out onto the turnout and stops at that joint this switch is reversed right now so that reverse point comes out here and stops there the main line as you can see the normal position has no joints and the reason for that is you want if for two reasons you always want the uh, main line to be de-energized if someone is in the turnout if someone were to get their train or a piece of track equipment or something, this side of that signal, it would knock the main line down and put that signal to stop for anyone who may be coming in that direction or down the main line or up the main line in this case uh, towards us in that direction. It also, if you are taking the signal out of the siding or in this case the number two track, if you are taking that signal, you have a clear signal. When you past that signal, you want the main line to be de-energized. You want it to be disabled so there is no chance of a clear signal down the main line while you are going through the turnout. Um, could there still be issues at places like this? Yeah, if somebody were to get their train by a red signal, even with PTC, if they were cruising up the hill at 20 miles an hour and ran that red signal and a guy was coming down here and he was only just around that curve, He'd knock that signal down, that'd knock that signal down, but they still might not be able to get stopped in time to avoid what they call a cornfield meet. So anyway, those are the polarity joints. And another thing about the polarity joints is since they are opposing polarities on each side of the joint, if one of those joints fails, it knocks the circuit down and you have to come out here and figure out why that joint's failing. It may have to be changed. All right, we are at the setback signals here. The trailing signals, whatever you want to call them, they do the same thing. And these joints, as you can see, are in pretty good shape. They look relatively new as well. Uh, you can see the track wires there plugged in, the bond strand. This wire right there, that is bond strand. It goes inside these hoses. 
goes down to a under there and goes into there that junction box and up to the house but this is where the OS track stops and the two main lines begin that's the number two track over on the right number one track on the left and the next signal down where these two track circuits would end is at the intermediates between Waylong and Marcel where we started this big adventure but anyway this is the end of the OS now I should mention that insulated joints are used as I they're used at all signals they're used in all turnouts to uh, separate mainline track from the from the turnout track all turnouts have polarity joints and uh, but uh, there are many applications in which insulated joints are used but they always serve the same function, which is to separate track circuits or end a track circuit. Uh, an insulated, insulated joints can be used in, a, say, a spur track turnout to stop the uh, signal circuit from going any further back than it needs to go. Sometimes that most spur tracks just have dead track beyond the approach that lights the come out signals. Sometimes come out signals are constantly lit, so they don't even have to have those circuits. Uh, when the switch is thrown and everything's okay, the signal just goes to clear. But anyway, a little thing about insulated joints. I hope it made sense. I'm really not that good at explaining things. <laughs> I guess the more I try to explain them, the uh, more I realize I'm not that good at it. And like I said a while ago, being, it, it's amazing how much I have forgotten in the two years that I am not involved in all this. But anyway... I hope that explained it a little bit. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop me comments below. Shoot me an email, motopoet59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and we will see you all later.